Hello, Jack here with our first session on targeted adjustments. And this is where it gets really fun. This is the paradigm shift. Because of course, before we could do targeted adjustments, our dodging and burning and so much more, we were left with always going into Photoshop to tell our complete story. We never could get the complete package done in a raw editor. If all we could do was color and tone, we could never really shape the scene, and it's in shaping the scene that we really get to enhance our photography. So let's jump in. We had two tools that make up this targeted adjustments. Of course, we've already seen a number of ways in which you can um, do a targeted adjustments through hue and saturation and things like that. But in this case, we have two specific tools, the adjustment brush and the graduated filter. And we're going to start with the graduated filter because it's the simpler of the two. And also, it's something that you're going to use on a regular basis. As soon as you click on the graduated filter, you'll notice that the panel over here on the right is completely taken over by its different options. Um, if I jump back over using the H for the hand tool, you'll see that all our panels are available here. If I type on uh, the G key, I jump over to the graduated filter, and that takes over the entire right side. And what we have here is um, a plethora of things that can be adjusted. Remember, if Adobe had just given us a brightness slider, if all we could do was our little graduated ND, which we're going to focus on right now, the graduated neutral density effect of being able to lighten and darken a portion of an image, that would have been great. But of course, they gave us so much more. And that's what we're going to see in these next few sessions. OK, so with that, First off, you can change all these parameters at one time. You've got a number over here that you can change from saturation, clarity, sharpness, etc. Rather than reset all these individually, uh, which by the way has another shortcut, which is double click on any slider and it resets it back to the default setting for that particular uh, parameter. You can reset all of the sliders at one time simply by clicking on the plus or minus of any of the different sliders. That will change that one particular parameter and reset all the rest. In this case, I want to take the brightness down. This is how I like doing my dodging and burning, is brightness more than exposure, though you'll see there will be options and uh, variations on that coming up. But I'm going to click on the minus, click, click, and now I'm at a minus 50. All the other sliders were reset to their basic setting, in this case, zero. And now I'm going to do a minus 50 brightness. Wherever I click with this tool is going to be the start of the gradient. It will be at 100% of whatever the slider is set to. Wherever I let go of the um, mouse will stop. It will have no effect whatsoever. So I'm going to come up here, click and drag on the top, drag down till I'm just past my horizon line, and there's my little graduated ND effect. You'll notice we've got a little preview up here. Of course, that's our P key. So we can get that preview. You'll also notice down here there's a Show Overlays option. That also has a nice little um, keyboard shortcut, the V key for Visualize. So between the V and the P key, P for Preview and V for Visualize, we can see what we're getting with this simple little adjustment. It's our darkening of the sky to bring our eye down to the horizon line. And in this case, a beautiful shot by Brooke Crystal of a father and daughter. Now the great thing with this tool, I'm going to tap the V key again, is that you can change these at any time very, very easily. If I click in the center, you can see I can actually move the entire gradient. I could, of course, click on the start or stop to change how quickly it transitions from full effect to no effect. I can move the green. If I'm holding down the shift key as I am now, it's constraining it to right angles or 45. I can let go of that and do it in any way that I want. But a great thing about this tool is if you move far away from the initial um, a set, the initial control points or overlays that are showing this gradient, I just simply click and drag again, which I'm going to do right here. I'm going to click and drag from the lower left-hand corner up into my scene to make that uh, wet sand really wet. So by doing that, I've just done two. So I clicked one. I didn't have to reset the tools. In this case, I'm using the exact same minus 50 brightness. And I've done two. So now I tap the V key, and there is my result. The P key gave me my preview. So you can see how that has 
focused the attention on the little girl and her father. Okay. The last thing I'm going to do here is I'm looking down at the wet sand. And as you uh, will come to know about me, I love water. I love reflections. I love high contrast areas like chrome and glass and water. And what I'm going to do here is I want to change that edge contrast. And remember, that's our clarity setting. We learned that in the basic tab. So what I'd like to do is come up here and increase the clarity. It's also wet sand, and that's going to increase contrast. So in this case, I want to create another gradient. But in this case, I'm going to come over here. I'm not going to use the minus 50 brightness. I'm going to reset that by clicking on the contrast slider over here. And I'm going to click on that. Click, click. It took the brightness out. That's 50. I can't come over here to Clarity and click on that twice because that would reset the contrast. So whether I click on Clarity or Contrast, I'm going to have to drag one of the parameters. So now I'm going to take it up 50 and up 50 for Contrast and Clarity. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click and drag. And I'm going to click and drag. I'm going to start out here and click and drag past the to the start of the little girl. Wait, quite a ways up here. And again, I'll tap the V key to hide that visualize, and the P key for before and after. And I'll actually, let's, let's actually delete that pin. I can't turn on and off one particular pin, so I'm just going to hit the delete key so you'll see exactly what this clarity and contrast are doing. Delete. You can see what that's doing in terms of focusing on the reflection, which of course for me is a big part of the story, especially since the father is looking down at the little girl. It's almost like they're looking down at uh, the duplicates of themselves and we could get all sorts of emotional of the past and future and little girl big girl etc etc with that pin you'll notice that when i did that all the pins are unactive or deactive right now you see that they're all white if i click here you'll notice that it goes back to being active so now it's got that red on there okay so with that, I'm going to come down here, and I could change it. Let's increase that contrast or clarity. Let's take it all the way up to 100, just for teaching purposes, and maybe experiment with that contrast just to show you. At this point, that high, it's actually going to become distracting. I look too much at the reflection and not at the father. So in this case, I am going to take it back to where I had it, 50, and the clarity at 50, which for me is the perfect balance. So there you have it. A quick and easy way of doing that graduated neutral density effect. Of course, that's the uh, the smoky gray to clear um, piece of glass that you could actually put in front of a camera, a real filter, as it were. That's what a neutral density filter is um, in the real world, in the analog world. And in this case, we're able to do it um, quickly, easily, and add the addition of contrast and clarity with just a couple little clicks. Let's do some other projects associated with the graduated filter and just see how far we can push it.